And uh, it, it's very lucky to have this chance to introduce our workshop and uh, the, uh, the, the introduction or some, uh, some information of this workshop. Uh, and his name implies uh, this workshop focus on the combination of artificial intelligence or AI with the mission critical communications and uh, computing. Uh, there are uh, some uh, strong uh, uh, incentive to build more reliable, efficient, and secure secure networks. Uh, so, uh, but it also raises uh, severe challenges due to the uh, the uh, communications and computing environment. So we try to solicit some uh, papers. Uh, talk about uh, the AI to solve the mission critical communications and compu computing issues at the edge. With the help of many colleagues, we are lucky to hold a full day workshop uh, today. And uh, without your involvement and support, it, it can't happen, especially as this uh, time of very difficult of the pandemic time. For today's uh, workshop, we have two keynotes, uh, one from Professor Zhang Junshan from Arizona State University, and uh, another from Dr. Suomi from AIL USA. Also, we have four papers from Open Call, uh, two from China, one from Japan, and one from the United States and the four invited talks from um, three from academia and uh, one from the industry. And uh, we, we will soon uh, start uh, the session A of today's workshop. And uh, this consists of uh, three papers from the open call and uh, we will uh, start it shortly. Thank you very much.
Um, hello, everyone. Um, this is the session A from uh, of the Aircom workshop. Uh, I noticed the first speaker uh, hasn't uh, been online last week, a uh, few minutes uh, for his coming. Thank you. Hi, Ronghang. This is Chi from China Mobile. So, can I? Can I, can I share my screen to see whether uh, my slides work on my phone? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we are in the session. I think we can test it um, a little later, I guess. Yeah. Okay. okay, 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 thank you. Notice the first speaker hasn't arrived, but the third one has been online. So uh, I will first introduce uh, the uh, the third speaker, Hao Ranja from the Harbin Engineering University, China. His uh, topic title is Real World ADS B Signal Recognition Based on Radio Frequency uh, Fingerprinting. Thank you. I will quit the sharing. The presenter is not in the room, right? Yeah, the first uh, um, presenter hasn't um, been in the, in the room. So uh, we, okay. we can try the, the third one first and then switch it back. Yes, yeah. I'll share it then. Um, one second. The second, is, uh, a, the second speaker is also in the room, yeah. Yeah, I, I shared the video from the first presenter. Okay, that, that's also okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one second. Okay. Let me know if you can hear the video, please. Can you hear it? Yeah, yeah. But I can't hear the voice of the video, yeah. Sorry? I cannot hear the voice. Yeah, yeah. fine. I can see the screen. Mm -hmm. hey, the, Nuria. Yes. 
no Lia, and also uh, uh, Jung, uh, Jung Bong. I think maybe it is better to start from the second, the present, or maybe the third one. Right? We can still wait a bit for the first uh, speaker. So fine. What do you think? Okay, yes, fine. Then let's move to the second, and I'll have the video ready in case the first presenter doesn't mm. show up. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so Fine. Uh, so I stop sharing. Now I will mute myself and you can start, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we can try the uh, the third speaker, Hao Ran Zha from Harbin Engineering University. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right, are you there? Hello, pardon. All right. Um, yes, yes. Uh, I, I think you are in the um, present mode, but uh, we, we can't think of it in full screen. You can switch it off, I guess, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can you can start it now. Yeah, can you start it? Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate the opportunity to attend this session. My name is Jin Xiangyang. The title of my presentation is a uh, Brand CSI pre um, pre Prediction Method Based on Deep Learning for First, let me provide a brief introduction in this area. With the development of the Internet of Vehicles and 5G, there emerge more and more challenging application scenarios with fast time varying channels and high mobility nodes 
such as high-speed trains, environment, and vehicle to infrastructure, V2I communication in highway to support the reliable vehicle communication and the mobile edge computing MEC, it is important to obtain the future channel state information, which is CSI, such as SNR, which can help opt optimize system transmission scheme. The classic SNR estimator includes a maximum likelihood estimator, squared signal to noise, variance estimator, and the second and fourth order moments estimator. However, the conventional SESI estimation, estimation algorithms usually take a long time to obtain the current CSI and cannot sense the future trend. We cannot hear you. Uh, are you there? Hello? It seems like I have some internet Problem. Yeah, from time to time we cannot hear you. And also, please, if you can uh, use full screen next time. Uh, yeah, can you put the presentation mode? Okay, let's continue. The classic SNR estimator includes maximum likelihood estimator, squared signal to noise, variance estimator, and the second and fourth order moments estimator. However, the conventional CSI estimation algorithms usually take a long time to obtain the current CSI and cannot sense the future chain. In this case, many articles have intensively researched on channel prediction and proposed many classic channel prediction math, um, models based on machine learning. We have still some problems. Uh, yeah, it, it seems he drops from time to time. Yeah, maybe we can share him his uh, his video as your backup. Yeah, sorry, the connect yeah. is yeah. not very good. Yeah. Yeah, let's try again. Yeah. Okay, one more time. Let's go to where we. Um, Yadan Jun proposed a modified ARIMA model for channel quality. Indicate, indicate prediction to solve the long delay problem in satellite environment. GDO use a long short-term memory LSTM network to predict SNR, and the C Rho propose an ocean model to predict CSI in 5G wireless communication system. However, in high mobility scenario, such as highway and high-speed train, high-speed train environment, the high-speed movement of vehicles will cause uh, rapid changes in channel characteristics. As we all know, coherence time will decrease when the increasing, with, the, with the increasing speed, which easily causes fast fading in millimeter wave system, but the um, common regression algorithm such as ARMA cannot check rapidly changing channel information. It usually leads to incorrect prediction results and makes the adaptive transmission scheme unable to select the correct mod modulation model. 
Furthermore, the data-aided channel estimator needs to increase their ins inserted pilots to adapt the fast-changing channel, which will greatly reduce the transmission efficiency. So in this paper, we develop a no-blind channel information prediction model based on deep, deep neural network BCPMN to adapt the fast changing channel and predict SNR without certain parity. Okay, I play the the pre recorded uh, video. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Please tell me if you can hear it. Presentation is a bright CSI prediction method based on deep learning. Can you hear it? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I'm okay. good. For V2I, millimeter wave channel. I'm going to give this talk in five parts as follows. First, let me provide a brief introduction in this area. With the development of the Internet of Miracles and 5G, there emerge more and more challenging application scenarios with fast time varying channels and high mobility nodes, such as high speed trains environment and vehicle to infrastructure V2I communication in highway. To support the reliable vehicle communication and mobile edge computing, MEC, it is important to obtain the future channel state information, CSI, such as SNR, which can help optimize system transmission scheme. The classic SNR estimator includes maximum likelihood estimator square signal to noise variance estimator and second and fourth order moment estimator. However, the conventional CSI estimation algorithms usually take a long time to obtain the current CSI and cannot sense a future trend. In this case, many articles have intensively researched on channel prediction and propose many classic channel prediction models based on machine learning. For example, Yadan Zhen proposed a modified ARIMA model for channel quality indication prediction to solve the long delay problem in satellite environment. GVIEW used a long short-term memory LSTM network to predict SNR and C. Rowe proposed an ocean model to predict CSI in 5G wireless communication system. However, in high mobility in high mobility scenario such as highway and high speed chain environment, the high speed moment of vehicle will cause rapid changes in in channel characteristic. As we all know, coherence time will decrease with the increasing speed, which easily causes fast fading in millimeter wave system. But the common regression algorithm, such as ARIMA, cannot track rapidly changing channel information. It usually leads to incorrect prediction results and uh, makes the adaptive transmission scheme unable to select the correct modulation mode. Furthermore, the data aided channel estimators need to increase their inserted pilots to adapt to the fast changing channel, which will greatly reduce the transmission efficiency. In this paper, 
we develop a, a novel brand channel information prediction model based on deep neural network, DCTMN, to adapt the fast changing channel and predict SNR without certain pilots. Unlike previously, work that use pilots to estimate CSI then make prediction. Our model only needs the raw receive signal as input instead of historical CSI or pilot data. And the output is the future channel characteristics. The basic idea is using CNN extraction ability and LSTM prediction ability to fit and predict channel information. Here comes the system model we use. A tested V2I millimeter wave communication scenario on the highway and a tested V2I communication scenario of high speed train environment are shown above, where the vehicles with different speeds communicate with base stations um, using millimeter wave bands and uh, need, to, need to predict the rapid changes of CSI in real time. And our system model can be defined as this, where k represents the index of a sample in time domain. Sk is the transmitted signal, and nk is the version noise. L is the number of multipass, and hlk is the else multipass channel model. When L is equal to zero, h0k is the loss pass as below. FD presents the maximum Doppler shift. FC is the carrier frequency. C is the light speed and V is the vehicle speed. TC is the incoherence time. When the, sec when the speed is increasing, the maximum Doppler shift is decreasing and the coherence time is increasing. If the symbol period is greater than the coherence time, fast fading occurs, which will significantly reduce the system transmission efficiency and the estimation accuracy. Therefore, we propose a blind channel prediction algorithm that can adapt to rapidly changing channels and does not rely on pilots. And the objective function can be spread as this well, n, this n is the true SNR variable. F presents the function that the neural network needs to fit. R is the received data matrix, and n plus L is the matrix, matrix uh, dimensional, dimension. R and L is the matrix matrix obtained from the received signal sequence after data pre-processing. Now, let me introduce our channel prediction model. The flowchart of our model is shown in figure two. For a certain modulation mode, its power statistics are regular. So our scene can use neural network to learn signal power statistics from raw received signal, then estimate SNR. In fitting channel, the channel parameters change randomly, but within a relatively small time window, this change can be fitted and predicted. So the main idea of this scene is to use CNN's excellent capability on, on feature extraction and LSTM's remarkable ability on time sequence analysis to uh, extract the channel information hidden in the received signal. Thus, we first pre-prose the received signal to make it easier to analyze and uh, meet the input format requirement of the neural network. When the receiver detects a data frame, we randomly truncate and buffer a signal with the fixed, fixed 
prime window length L. Then we stitch the cached data of N adjacent windows into a two dimensional matrix cat R, which can be found as below. Each row vector of the input matrix represents the channel information of different frames, and the change train of channel information is divided between each row vector. Similar to basic uh, image edge detection program, when the channel information of adjacent row vectors changes, the convolutional layer can eject the edge features between adjacent row vectors. Then the input data matrix is sent to CNN. Similar to natural language processing in LP, we consider a row vector as a word and all row vectors as a sentence. Thus, the first two dimensional convolutional layer can extract the low level features from the adjacent samples and the adjacent frames. The low level features represent the channel information of each frame and are similar to the meaning of a word. Then the second convolutional layer extracts the change chain of channel information from the low level features. However, due to the fact that CNN's receptive field is limited by the size of convolutional kernel, it is impossible to catch the long-term dependency of channel information, and it is difficult for CNN to accurately fit and predict it. Then, the LSTM layers are used to exploit the long-term chain chain in the whole time steps and predict the channel information. Finally, two, four, two fully connected layers are used to map high-level features back to low-level features, and then output the final predicted value. Here is our simulation result. We use the normalized mean square error, NMSE, to calculate the error between the predicted value and the true value. The definition of an MSE is as follows. As we can see, where the um, YP is a predicted value and the YT is a true value. And our uh, data set size is 20,000 frames and the ratio of training set, verification set, and test set is 0.8. 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is factory. This file depicts the two and the predicted SNR at different vehicle speeds. The channel change the, the channel change rate increase with the speed. The average M and MSE at each speed. Portraits slightly due to the different test steps. It can be seen from this picture that the predicted SNR is almost the same as the, as the true value and can perform well in different speeds, which shows that the proposed model is very efficient, effective and can adapt well to different local shifts. We also compared the SNR prediction performance of our BCTMN scheme with the LSTM prediction scheme proposed by Tiu and the Ocean scheme proposed by Ruo. Um, these two schemes both need the historical channel state information, but our model just needs the received signal. As we can see, the BCTMN model can achieve better performance. Adaptively, modulation and coding is widely used in the vehicular communication. Thus, we selected two PSK 
16 Chrome and 16 APS case to test the generalization performance of our model. We have regenerated the data set with the three different modulation modes under the same simulation scenario. Then we have retrained the network and tested the signals of the modulation mode. Peak 7 shows the performance of our proposed model in QPSK, 16 APSK, and 16 Chrome. As you can see, the PCPMN can achieve similar prediction performance in all three modulation modes and has good generalization performance. Let's come to the conclusion part. In this paper, we propose a front-channel information prediction model based on deep neural network in millimeter wave wireless communication system. The BCP MNC can adapt to rapidly changing channel at different speeds and achieve and can achieve accuracy accurate CSI prediction performance. We propose our data pre-processing method for the received signal so that CNN can best extract the channel information. We compared the prediction performance of the three algorithms BCPMN, STM, and OCEAN. The BCPMN can achieve a lower N MSE and only needs received signal instead of estimating the CSI in advance. To validate BCPMN's generalization performance, we conducted experiments in QPSK, 16 Chrome, and 16 APSK modulation modes, and the results demonstrate that BCPMN can achieve similar prediction performance in all three modulation modes. That's all my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I noticed uh, the uh, Jingxiang is still there. And uh, is there any questions? Oh, okay. Okay, if there is no uh, currently no question, we can move uh, forward uh, to the next uh, speaker since we are uh, slightly behind the schedule. The next speaker is Ran Duo from the University of Electronic uh, Communications, Japan. His uh, title is Context Aware Clustering for SDN Enabled Network. Is, uh, Okay. Ran, there? Okay. Uh, hey. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm here. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Uh, can you see this? Yeah, yeah, I can see this. Yeah, yeah. sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for attending my presentation. Uh, the topic of my presentation is context-aware clustering for SDN-enabled network. And my name is Ran Duo and it's not, um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm from the University of Electrocommunications. And here is the content of my presentation. First is a brief introduction for the motivation of this research. And the second, I will discuss about the related works. And third, I will introduce the SDN enabled context aware clustering approach. And fourth, I will take out the simulation to evaluate the proposal. And at last, I will do a conclusion. We all know that uh, the vehicular at home network always have a highly dynamic network topology and it has uh, limited resources. So it is difficult to provide a 
efficient communication for the vehicular network. Uh, uh, but the clustered VNNets can improve the network efficiency in the vehicular environment. So we use the clustered VNNet. And however, the different types of applications work for the vehicles could have the different requirements for the network quality. For example, uh, the vehicular sensor data, uh, the vehicular sensor data collection uh, is, is a traffic intensive application, which means that this application require a communication approach that could deliver a large amount of data in a short time. <clears throat> in contrast, most of the vehicle to vehicle applications are used to deliver safety message or control message between the vehicle, which are delay sensitive. Some applications such as the uh, vehicle camera data analysis uh, also have to conduct some intensive computing at the vehicles. So we propose an SDN enabled context aware clustering to support various requirements of applications. Uh, the concept of the clustering is to logically gather vehicles that geographically close to each other into groups by using some specific uh, algorithms. There are some related studies in vehicle clustering. Uh, some is uh, some uh, some clustering algorithm using the mobility mobility feature of the vehicle to have a, a stable connection of the communication. Uh, some other clustering algorithm uh, are are depending on the uh, connective connectivity degree to get a more uh, to get a shorter connective uh, sh shorter delay but the but this this existing technologies do not consider the single uh, network uh, just consider a single network scenario but not appropriate when changing to another network scenario so clustering uh, algorithm that meets various requirements should be discussed. Uh, so we propose a SDN enabled clustering aware class uh, enabled context aware clustering. Uh, the proposed clustering method can be conducted by two parts. Uh, the first one is uh, SDN enabled vehicle uh, via net architecture. And the second is clustering algorithm. Uh, this is the architecture we are talking about. In this architecture, SDN is introduced to separate the network of control plan and the data plan to realize the programmable and flexible network environment. It provides a global view on the controller to allow the statistical feature of application traffic to be easy to extract it from the uh, network, network devices by scanning the flow tables. Uh, so it can realize the application classification. Furthermore, the programmable feature of SDN makes the clustering process more flexible and easy to uh, use the global information to, to, collect, uh, to collect the information from the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle at the data plan uh, are divided into the clusters. The vehicle in the same cluster are able to use, uh, are able to use the 
uh, I trouble E eight o two dot eleven p to communicate with each other directly or through a communication uh, with the cluster head to, uh, to communicate with a, a core network and using the cellular interface. Otherwise, uh, the controller at the control plan can collect the information of the applications, including the source destination address port and source destination address and forwarding bytes count and uh, flow pri priority to classify the application. Besides, it also monitors the vehicle's information and proceed with a suitable cluster algorithm to adapt the demand of the application. As this figure shows, the vehicle application are classified into three kinds. Uh, the, the, uh, the kind of the application is a lot. We just, in this uh, research, we just classified, is, classified the applications into three kinds. Uh, the first is delay sensitive application. It always carries a time sensitive message that requ require low net no network delay. And the second is traffic intensive application. It uh, needs large traffic flow from the network. And the third is uh, computation intensive application. It needs the computing ability of vehicle to achieve data process. Uh, the controller at the, in the architecture that we mentioned about in the above uh, figure are used to are used to cl uh, classify the application. It used the IP address and the port number pair to identify the application. And we define the application with higher priority to be the delay sensitive application. And otherwise, uh, with large amounts of forwarding bytes are defined as the traffic intensive applications. And the application traffic with few forwarding bytes at the row side, but having a unique port number is regarded as the computation intensive application. Uh, for the conventional transmission method in the clustering network, the data packet would uh, traverse the same cluster head to connect with the network uh, network. And however, in the in our proposed clustering algorithm, the data packets are forwarded by the different cluster heads uh, corresponding to the different class uh, application types. We propose a heuristic algorithms. At the beginning of the clustering, the uh, vehicles cluster can be initialized by dividing the vehicle into group and satisfying the group scale that is less than the lambda multiply R. And where R uh, denotes the value of the largest uh, IEEE802.11p communication range. And the lambda is a coefficient to control the scale of clusters in different applications. Uh, to support the different type of application, we set different type of clusters to have a diff different value of lambda. Uh, to apply different algorithm to different kinds of application, vehicle is vehicle's mobility context are collected. Uh, on the SDN controller and the three metric D, S, Q are obtained. D is used for estimating the duration time in the cluster. And the parameter S is used for uh, measuring the received signal quality of the vehicle. And parameter Q is used for measuring the computation 
computational capability of the vehicle. And these formula are used to calculate the parameter that mentioned above at the previous slide. And the dk in this formula, dk uh, represents the stability of the vehicle k in the cluster and is defined by this formula. And uh, dki, little dki, represents the connection stability between vehicle k and vehicle i. And the n is the number of vehicles in the cluster. Uh, and S, SK is the signal quality of vehicle K in the cluster, and it is defined by this formula. And S, little SKI means the received signal power of vehicle K from vehicle I. And QK is the computation capability of the vehicle in the cluster. And the little QK represents the CPU performance of vehicle K and uh, delta is the CPU usage. After get, uh, getting this value DSQ, we normalize this into a value ranging from uh, zero to one to evaluate this parameter more easily. After grouping the vehicle, a vehicle has to select a vehicle has to be selected as a cluster head in each cluster by using cluster head selection algorithms. For the delay sensitive application, the cluster head is defined by the selecting by selecting the vehicle with max number of connections and having a max DIN. And for the tra traffic intensive application, the vehicle with max parameter are selected as the uh, cluster head, where the max parameter I uh, equals to mu one multiplied DIN plus mu two multiplied SIN, where mu I plus mu uh, two equals to one. And for the computation intensive application, the vehicle that satisfied the application computation requirements with max DIN value is selected as the cluster head. In this way, uh, clusters can be formed to support the vehicular network. Uh, in order to uh, evaluate the proposal. The simulation are conducted using the simulation tool OMNET 5.0 simulator with the INET open source model and the mobility tool Sumo Mobility Simulator are used. And the simulation parameter are set as the table shows. We simulate the a vehicle moving on the 2000 meter straight road with four lanes. And the topo uh, topology of the simulation is just like the uh, figure one shows. Uh, the vehicle are the vehicle can cluster can be managed by the SDN controller. And the vehicle can use the uh, both use both uh, IEEE 802.11p interface and uh, cellular interface to communicate. And vehicle are set to run a continuous TCP service connecting to the server in the core network or run a UDP application uh, broadcasting to the other vehicle in the road. For a delay sensitive application scenario, we set the vehicle to run UDP application to uh, simulate the network alarm in case of emergency. The figure shows the 
uh, average delay in the different cluster size. The proposed clustering algorithm, uh, clustering method using the both cellular and 11 peak communication to improve, uh, uh, to improving uh, the communication who provide two hubs uh, into a cluster communication and up to four hubs wireless propagation to reach all vehicle. Uh, but the communication of using 11P, single 11P, may flood to uh, n hub to reach all vehicle. So using the cellular 11P method is the better choice. The figure shows the delay becomes smaller when the cluster size getting larger. Uh, therefore, we can get the conclusion that the large cluster size are request for the delay sensitive application. This figure shows the transmission delay of using different clustering algorithm, which are proposed algorithm and the stable algorithm and random algorithm. Uh, the, stable, the, propose, uh, the stable algorithm uh, select the longest lime lifetime in the cluster to uh, to select select the vehicle with the longest lifetime in the cluster as a cluster head, and the random uh, method using the ra randomly select the cluster head. And the result shows the proposed algorithm has shorter delay compared with other uh, clustering algorithm. And for the traffic intensive application scenario, the transmission efficiency and reliability are important. In order to evaluate the uh, influence of clustering lifetimes on network performance, vehicles are set to run TCP applications uh, to communicate with server in the wired network. The figure shows the transmission throughput uh, with different clustering lifetime. The, the, cl the result indicate the longer cluster lifetime performs better to the traffic intensive application. This figure shows the change of data error rate in different received signal power. It shows the received signal quality is important indicator that affect the trans, uh, traffic intensive application. For computation intensive application, we use a network scenario that vehicle in the same cluster share their information to the cluster head. After a series of computation on the cluster head, it shared the result with the cluster members. We evaluate how the largest computation data, computing data size can be influenced by the number of cluster members and cluster lifetime. The result shows that the computing, computing data size become larger when the number of cluster member grows and cluster lifetime become longer. But when more vehicle join, computation capability of the cluster head should be considered. And this figure shows the different required time for the application in computing different size of data when using different clustering algorithm. When the size of computing data become larger, the total time is mainly affected by the data transmission delay and calculation delay. Uh, when the data transmission capability are the same, uh, the computing capability of the cluster head is the main factor that affect the change of total time. So when the transmission delay become longer, our proposal shows its obvious advantages. Uh, this simulation are uh, conducted uh, using the single application uh, types of application uh, and now we are doing the work about um, uh, that about how the our algorithm sh shows its uh, advantages 
when the uh, network scenario is uh, under network is under the scenario that using the different types of applications. And this is the conclusion of uh, our research. Uh, we, we classify, uh, we propose a SDN enabled VNet architecture and classify the uh, class, uh, classify the application into different types. And we propose algor clustering algorithm correspondingly. And the result shows the large cluster size better support the delay sensitive application and making a connection lifetime longer for uh, longer for traffic intensive application and offer large computation capability in case of too much too many cluster members uh, is uh, is a better choice are a better choice and that's all thank you Okay, thank you, Ranjo. Uh, is there any, any questions? Okay, uh, I have one uh, um, 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 quick question. I mean, in one night, uh, the cells uh, or the base stations are usually de deployed uh, along the road or along the street. So my question is, is, that, uh, is it pos uh, possible or practical for these cells or these space stations to form some clusters, uh, from some uh, some class uh, for from some cluster. I think uh, in your simulations you mentioned some clusters in uh, three hundred and fifty meters or, or something like that. Is there uh, is that practical or is there some practical cases? Oh yeah. We we just uh, cluster the vehicle and didn't consider the way station on the uh, on the road side. Okay, okay, thank you. Is yeah. there any any extra questions? Okay, okay, thank you, Randu. Uh, let's move thank to you. the next speaker. The next speaker is Hao Ran Zha from the Harbin Engineering University, China. His uh, talk is Real World ADSB Signal Re Recognition Based on Radio um, Frequency Fingerprinting. That's where I come. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored and proud to have the opportunity to speak at this meeting today. I would like to present my paper, Real World ADSB Signal Recognition, based on radio frequency fingerprinting. First of all, I would like to introduce my school, Harbin Engineering University. As a national survey and narrow signaling area, the HU campus has picnic landscape in four seasons, such as spring aquifer blossom, summer hike, lake hiking, autumn, autumn maple leaf, and winter snow carrier. It's uh, very comfortable to learn and live in HU. Welcome to my school. I will do this report for these four parts. First is the introduction of real world ADSP signal recognition based on video frequency fingerprinting. In the future, ATC technology currently used will quickly reach its capacity limit to replace traditional primary and secondary surveillance radar measures. The International Civil Aviation Organization has adopted a new protocol standard called Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, ATSB. ATSB is to connect navigation information by the Airborne Information Process Unit and then broadcast it through the airborne communication equipment. For the aircraft equipped with ADSB receiver, combine all the broadcast information and the receiver monitoring information with its location. It can form a more intuitive and three-dimensional surrounding traffic information for the pilot. 
any aircraft equipped with ADSB system uh, broadcast the location uh, through the public communication channel. Nevertheless, the ADSB portal does not provide any encryption and authentication methods due to the advent of cheap and accessible software defined videos. Today, anonymous devices can be attracted by uh, using widely available SDRs. Uh, the main contribution of the article are as follows. First, we proposed a design uh, and design a normal IFF recognition scheme based on the contiguous sticker images and CNN. The generated uh, equipped plan map is uh, similar to the fingerprint graphic, so it can be identified using the image recognition CNN. Second, we proposed an ADSB orange signal de detection, acquisition, and real-time labeling method and verify the method by using a 1019 MHz baseband signal collected by RTL SDR. Collecting signals from a total of five aircraft, uh, 500 signals we select uniformly for each aircraft. Third, we compare the performance of contiguous standard images and the constant diagram under the NXNet network and different signal to noise ratio. Uh, besides, we also compare the performance of contiguous uh, sticker images on NXNet and GoogleNet. Then it is the signal processing. Uh, an aircraft you claim its proposition and work is using an onboard spy in the sky receiver. This information is then twice per second by the transmission subsystem ADSB out. They are sustained by ground stations and by the nearby aircraft if equipped with uh, ADSB in, where they are uh, connected further by uh, some coll collision avoidance systems such as uh, TCAS. ADSB offers uh, many further fields such as uh, ID, uh, intent, urgency code, and uh, uh, navigation accuracy. Two ADSB data link standards are currently in use, a uh, universal access transceiver UTA and uh, the um, 1019 MHz extended squitter. Uh, 1019 uh, MHz extended squitter is a technology based on s mode transpond with a frequency of 1019 MHz. The format of the ADSB message data block utilizes a, a pass position modulation, PPM coding. The first half of the trans transmitter pass is one, and the second half is zero. A computer ADSB signal is composed of um, a nine micro, uh, microsecond primary pre pre pass and uh, uh, 112 microsecond data information bit plus, as shown in the, in, the, in the figure. After receiving the RFS signal containing ADSB signal from the antenna, the receiver signal shall first be amplified by the automatic gain control. Uh, and then, through the uh, RF image rejection filter, the uh, image rejection filter is a band bus filter with the filter with the filter out unnecessary image signal and then mix it. And the IQ signal is decoded by using the uh, relevant decoding authority. The total data collection and labeling is shown in the figure. We collect data from a total of five aircraft at fixed locations. Each aircraft randomly selected uh, 500 uh, orange baseband IQ signal, and uh, each signal was uh, annotated with uh, an ITOR code. And then we divided the data into training and validation data sets. We use 17% uh, of the signal for training and 30% uh, for validation. Avoid 
uh, avoid uh, class imba imbalance in ADSB data by ensuring a uniform distribution of labels. Uh, figure to the right shows the labor distribution to check if the generated labels are uniformly distributed. And in RFF classification, the data to be connected is not an image, but uh, uh, what we get is uh, uh, is complex IQ data to manipulate the existing deep learning models. We transform the complex data samples into continuous scanner images for deep learning. The first step in data processing is plot the single into a form of a constant diagram, and then we color the constant diagram according to the normalized dot density of each point in the uh, constant picture. Furthermore, the normalized point density of the symbol in each sample calculated at uh, Formula 1 in the slide shoes, where HP function and uh, VP function obtain the um, homogeneous axis in the vertical axis value of the P symbol. N is the number of the symbols of the sample, symbols of the sample. <coughs> Let's have the length of the select rectangular range when they determined by the uh, normalized point density. Then every point in the custom diagram will be colored according to the color bar, and it normalizes the point density. The overall calculation formula of the custom stream image is three, where, where uh, W0, H0 are the upper left Corner according uh, according to the, of the continuous signal images. W1, H1 are lower right corner of coordinates of the continuous signal images. X0, Y0 are the upper left corner of the density window function. X1, Y1 are the lower right corner of the density window of the function. Figure over the bottom slide show, uh, shows the uh, Continuous signal images of the five aircraft ADSB signals we uh, captured. Uh, next, we talk about the experiment. Uh, in NXNet and Google Net network, the lost layer with learnable weights is fully connected. Replace this fully connected layer with a new fully connected layer with the number of the upper equal to the number of classes of the ADSB datasets. We classify the radiation images using the fine turn network and calculate uh, the classification precision. The test precision of the ADSB data in NXNet and Google Net networks is 98.66% uh, 19, and 1997.89%. Uh, uh, the figure and the figure in the left and the, and the figure in the right shows the network's confusion matrix. To cover the classification performance at a different noise level, we add uh, adaptive right Gaussian noise to uh, the test data for the experiment. Figure in the left shows the classification performance of our continuous thinner images at a different uh, uh, noise network. It should be noted that the signal to noise uh, here refers to the uh, SNR after noise is uh, immutilated when we regard the orange signal as a pure signal without noise. In fact, uh, the orange signal itself also contains noise. Uh, therefore, the actual SNRs are more Demuted with then those issues in the feature in the feature figures. It can be seen that although these noise samples are not to be trained, the continuous linear image have the excellent performance to classify these noise samples. When the SNR is greater than 28 dB, the classification accuracy 
and both these states is higher than 95%. Also, comparing the classification accuracy of NXNet and GoogleNet and different SNRs, the NXNet classification is more robust to noise. Last, we uh, come to the conclusion. We we propose uh, the conclusion first. We we propose and design a novel IFF recognition scheme based on continuous deep images and deep learning. Second, we design an ADSB original signal capture and labeling method and verify this method by using a 1019 MHz baseband signal called uh, collected by RTL SDR. The experiment conclusion under different different uh, as an, uh, uh, signal to noise ratios and different networks shows the effect effectiveness of the continuous signal images. And it shows that the excellent identification performance of eye fingerprint can lay a foundation for the physical laser security of aircraft. Next, we introduced our future, future work. First, we try to use the better equipment to collect more ATSB signals to study IF fingerprints. Next, we uh, try to adjust the continuous signal image to adapt to a different channel requirements. That's all for my talk. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Is there uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. And thank you very much, Laura. And uh, if you have any questions, we, you can contact our run by uh, by email or something else. And uh, thank you everyone for coming for the uh, uh, session A of the air calm workshop. And uh, we will have a uh, break and then we can continue to the session B. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>